Ah, poi mi, mi dai l'indirizzo. Eh, ah, vado a vedere. Regenerative agriculture is, is, is not a method, it's a way of looking at things, it's an approach. And then within this, this approach, there will be appropriate methods for a certain crop, for a certain soil, for a certain environment, for a certain climate. From this field to that field there, I will use a completely different method of cultivation of the same crop, but the approach is the same. Nature doesn't waste. The whole system that we are, we are setting up here is based on biomimicry in nature and trying to create natural productive systems. That's the vision, to study, to experiment and to get as close as we can uh, to nature's behavior and productiveness and efficiency with all these amazing ec ecological services that nature gives to the biosphere. Here there are two important elements, uh, slope management and space management. Slopes are very difficult to manage because we can't go with machinery. And slopes are the, the most erodible parts of the farm. So we need to keep them fully covered with uh, either tree canopy or pasture. So we need to manage them with the help of animals, which are sheep, which will keep a nice and dense uh, turf, allowing us to cultivate and to, to manage the hazelnuts. In this particular case, we have planted them on an hexagon uh, shape, uh, where at every angle we have a tree, and in the middle of the hexagon, we have another tree. This is the structure that resembles what bees do on the comb, the beehives. What bees do in order to have the maximum amount of cells on the comb in their beehives. These are an essential element of the regenerative farm because they increase the functional biodiversity of the farm. And probably for us it's more important in pollination and it's just secondary the production of honey and all the rest of the, the products. Cosa sono le key line? Andiamo a chiedere. Ci sono le key line? Sì. Sono quelle curve qua. Le curve del frutteto. Ah. Visto che il frutteto non è, non è tutto in fila, eh? Ma è tutto storto. Sì. Quelle lì si chiamano key line. Sì. Dove la curva diventa panciosa? Sì. Mh? È la valle dove va tutta l'acqua. Eh. E allora noi cosa facciamo? Facciamo queste curve qua che prendono l'acqua dalla valle dove, dove si accumula e dove ce n'è tantissima, è sempre bagnato, fangoso, scivoloso, puzzoloso e la portiamo verso il punto più secco così che gli alberi che ricevono poca pioggia e poca acqua hanno un po' di acqua e quelli che ne ricevono troppa non ne hanno troppa capito? Here we are growing fennel and beetroot. If you look at pasture, if you look at natural forest, there's, it's never wasted. Uh, we try to do the same with vegetables. And the soil it has to be completely covered by the trees and the plant uh, canopy uh, in order to have this beautiful, beautiful effect of protecting the soil, having a lots of roots pumping carbon in the soil, activating microbiology and creating really a pasture of vegetables. And this is a space efficiency. It's done again by transplanting the, the plants on a diamond shape pattern. And we can produce uh, per square meter 
one to two thirds more food than is produced by conventional uh, farms. It means that our uh, vegetable production enterprise, it can be a one third or to two thirds smaller than uh, a conventional one. Molto caldo, è molto caldo, Yule. È molto, molto caldo, Sofia. E come? Bellissimo. There are two extremely important elements of the landscape and uh, of the farm. Uh, the first is access. So access is often uh, something which is misunderstood and, and undervalued. Every single path, it becomes the, the veins of the farm where the flow of energy passes through. And uh, especially here is a great example. This was uh, till two years ago. It was just like a battlefield, canyons and water during even the smallest of the rains. It was just like reaping uh, the, the soil. With the cars, we were just trying to find the best way to, to drive up to the main gate. So what we did, we, we did this compromise of using uh, concrete, but because this is gonna uh, remain an access, but at the same time, we managed to harvest all the water, excess water that runs uh, when it rains. Even the smallest of the rains, uh, it, it goes to multiple ditches like this, and then it's harvested under the ground via pipe, and then to water tanks. Uh, from this road, we managed to harvest around a, a million and a half liter per year, uh, just with natural rainwater. And the angle of the, of the road, it allows the water to, to flow toward this stone wall. And behind the stone wall, there is a whole drainage system with drainage pipes. And then all the water is sucked in by the wall and collected. you enter in the property and you you see very high quality uh, fodder for, for animals. I mean, in this case it's alfalfa, alpha. we cut it like six times this year. It grows very fast. A beautiful legume that on, on its, its own root has got a symbiosis with some bacteria that in exchange of the sugars that the plant produces via uh, photosynthesis, it feeds these bacteria which are called dobium and in exchange, they fix nitrogen from the atmosphere, which is very abundant, but the plant can't use it. These bacteria fix it from a, a gaseous to a solid form. And the plant can absorb nitrogen, which is one of the three most important nutrients for all plants. A very important part of uh, water management will be done also in this uh, access where we'll have uh, permanent ditches that will slow down uh, erosion and bring all the excess water into rock holes that will divert and, and, and send water toward the deeper horizons of uh, the soil reaching the um, water table so it's like feeding the water table every single farm should be feeding water table with excess water that can't be uh, harvested that can't be collected in tanks or, or ponds or, or crops every single path has to have more functions and they can be productive here we planted kiwis female kiwis on the right side and male kiwis on the left side and then we'll have horizontal posts will grow the kiwis on top of it and because of the all the trellis or the per pergola system will go through the whole axis of the farm uh, we'll have this air flow moving through the farm uh, so we'll have cold spots uh, that will allow us to create this vortex of, uh, uh, of air in the whole farm. And air is extremely important uh, for, uh, to control uh, pathogens, especially fungi and bacteria.
I'm completely in love with mulberries uh, because they, they have a million functions. We planted 25 varieties of uh, mulberries in the last three years and this is possibly uh, the most high in protein leaf in the whole farm. So it reaches 24% of protein and very high sugars and very high digestible uh, matter for animals. So it makes uh, mulberry possibly the best fodder uh, we can have here for our animals. And then the leaves are extremely nutritious for animals. It grows in the drought. It produces amazing fruits, very sweet, very high value for the market and because we sell directly, we can harvest them and sell them uh, straight away. Uh, something that the supermarkets can't do because it, it just uh, ripens so fast that it will rot in a uh, few hours. So these will be planted in the whole farm in bushes that will be used for animals as a protein source and high energy. Again, a perennial crop rather than a, an annual crop uh, used for animals. It's a perfect connection from what was successful in the past and what is successful now in the future. So it's not about saying no to technology, no to research, no to science, no to universities. But it requires a different way of looking at things.